Hey, what's up? It's Jen, and I'm here to help you live a happier, healthier, more well-balanced lifestyle through small, intentional changes each day. If you like what I'm sharing with you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, and you'll be one of the first to know when I have these new little bursts of positivity and helpful tips in your inbox. So I have a question for you today. Do you like to make a new dinner each night or do you like to utilize your leftovers? Go ahead and leave your answers for me in the comments. I want to see what is going to be most helpful for you. So I can tell you from my experience, I love cooking and I love spending time in the kitchen, but <laughs> things get busy and things get crazy. And I don't necessarily want to make a new fresh meal every single night. So today I'm going to share with you some of my tips and some of my kitchen utensils that I use to help make flawless, easy, simple dinners. And these tips are tips that I was able to enforce while I was in a later meeting in the evening and trying to figure out what we were going to have for dinner. And my boys got dinner ready and I didn't have to do anything. So by the time I was done with my meeting, they had dinner all ready to go. And all I had to do was just sit down and enjoy it. That's a win right there, right? So how do I do this? I've got a couple of things that help me do this in my kitchen. I want to share that um, today I'm going to be talking about a specific recipe that I use for this, but it's pretty, you know, plug and play. You can use any kind of sauce or soup or stew, like any kind of um, recipe like that. Today I'm going to be talking about bolognese. This is a family favorite. My family absolutely loves this sauce. It cooks for a long time, so being able to utilize all these tools is really helpful in getting a meal on the table very quickly and just being very intentional about how you're using your time. So how do I do this? With my bolognese sauce, I like to use my number one favorite cooking utensil, and that's the crock pot. So this sauce is going to be cooking all day. If you're making this recipe, this bolognese sauce on low, it's gonna take about 10 to 12 hours. If you do it on high, you can bump it up to about six to eight hours. So if you get it ready in the morning before you leave for work or before you know all your activities, by the time you come home, it's all ready for you, or you can set it so that you get everything prepped up the night before, and then it's ready for you to portion out the next morning. So this is what I did the other day and I was able to have a lasagna on the table for dinner. I put the sauce on on Sunday night in the morning. It was all good to go and I made my lasagna for that night, for Monday night. Now, if you make a lasagna from scratch, you know there are a lot of pieces that are involved in that, so it takes a long time. So being able to make use of things like slow cookers is gonna be very, um, very important to you in getting a dinner on the table in a timely manner. I'm gonna kind of show you some of the things from my sauce. It's so delicious. You start off, you chop up some vegetables, you brown some meat, and you put it, get that all taken care of in a pot. Then it's gonna go in the crock pot where it simmers. So there is just a little bit of prep work. Now, if you're a vegetarian or you just plain don't like meat, you can do the same kind of thing with more of a marinara or you can use your favorite meat substitute in this. I would be a little bit careful with some of the meat substitutes. Um, whatever you're familiar with, use that. It, the long cooking time may not transfer well to the meat substitutes, whether you're using the Beyond Meat or sausage or, or like any of those kinds of things. You might wanna play around with that a little bit. We are meat eaters. I don't really use that as much because it's just, you know, I've gotta do what's gonna work for my family and that's not what we do. But I think it's a great option for you to be able to use that. So go ahead and give it a try. It's worth a try at least. My next thing, my next item that I love using is my food saver. So this is a vacuum sealer. So this takes my nice cooked sauce, put it in just regular containers, overnight in the refrigerator. So it has a chance to cool down and be completely cool. Because if you're gonna vacuum seal something, you wanna make sure it's all the way cool. Otherwise that heat in there is just gonna have it continue to cook and putting it in your freezer, it's gonna lower the freezer temperature. It's gonna give it like a funky, um, you know, it's not gonna have the freshest flavor. But these vacuum seal bags are really gonna help keeping the flavor really fresh. It's gonna be fantastic. Um, so after it's cooled overnight in the refrigerator, I take it out and then I ladle it in. I usually store in about four cup containers because I think that that's a pretty basic, if you're just gonna toss it with some pasta, about four cups for a family, um, for a family of four, we're pretty big eaters. That works well for us. And then we have a couple of leftovers, but really, 
if two cup portions, one cup portions, whatever works for you. If you're a single person, maybe one cup is better because you don't need like a ton of it. Um, you know, when I, before I was married, I would make a ton of stuff and I'd be eating it for days and days and days at a time. So figure out whatever works best for you and your family. Four cups works for me. So I'll measure it out into a glass four cup measuring cup, pour it into my bags, then vacuum seal it. And then what I do is I put it on a sheet pan, put those bags on the sheet pan and put that in the freezer so that they can freeze nice and solid. I'm gonna show you one now. So this is what it looks like when it's all frozen. So the benefit of this is now, instead of having your sauce in a big clunk square iceberg kind of shape and trying to figure out how to store that container in your freezer, you have this, which is much easier than having to play freezer Tetris, trust me. So that's gonna bring me to my third and final favorite kitchen utensil that I'm going to use for this. And that's my deep freezer. For a long time, I didn't have one. I just worked off the standard, you know, freezer that comes with a fridge and that's fine. The food saver is going to help you make better use of that freezer by doing these tips. However, if you're cooking for a family and you want to be, you know, budget friendly, having that deep freezer is really gonna help you out with it because you can store tons of sauce. You make a huge batch of this sauce and then you have little quick meals that you can pull out of the freezer whenever. I do this with pulled pork, with soups, stews, other sauces, um, even like grilled chicken. If I grill up a bunch of chicken and I want to have some for later, I'll slice it up, pop it in a uh, vacuum sealed bag and pop that in the freezer so that I can pull stuff out because I like to have quick, easy, like healthy meals that I can pull out at a moment's notice. So having that freezer is really gonna help you to be able to have those ready to go when you are ready. So these are some great tips that I use to get dinner on the table quickly. I want you to share what helps you. Um, has this been helpful for you today? Are these tips that you're gonna be able to use? I have links to some of my favorite, my food saver that I use, my crock pot, and a similar uh, deep freezer that I use. The links are gonna be in the description, so feel free to check those out. They're gonna be really helpful for you. If you like this, go ahead and leave a comment, like it, and hit the subscribe. I hope that it's been helpful, and I I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day, and I hope you live a happy, healthy, well-balanced lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching.